Support for this podcast comes from the Phil Smith Center for Free Enterprise at the FAU College of Business. The Phil Smith Center for Free Enterprise supports the vision and strategic plan of the College of Business to advance thought leadership in business. The center supports chaired professorships and research, educational programs for faculty members and students, distinguished visiting faculty, along with a lecture series and other educational programs focused on the principles of free enterprise and how those principles affect growth and prosperity. Learn more at business.fau.edu forward slash Phil Smith. Hello, my name is Dan Gropper, and I am the Dean of the College of Business here at Florida Atlantic University. And in today's edition of the Dean's Podcast, we're introducing some of our new instructors. Our next guest is Mircea Marandici, and Mircea brings a great deal of experience, over 30 years of experience uh, at IBM in automation, robotics, and enterprise software. It's a great deal of experience that helps benefit our students. Uh, He also brings a master's and a bachelor's in electrical engineering. And uh, we're very pleased to have him join us now full-time in the College of Business at FAU. He's been an adjunct previously and just taught a course here and there. So now we welcome him full-time to the College of Business. So welcome. Good morning, and thank you very much for the opportunity. It's a pleasure to be here and to uh, speak with you. So one of the great things that I think about Florida Atlantic University is we focus in the business school on bringing the business community into the business classroom so that our students can learn from experienced professionals as well as professors who can teach just the theory. So how do you think about bringing your industry experience into the classroom? So, uh, joining the, uh, the uh, FAU teaching ranks was a wonderful opportunity for me to continue in my industry and my areas of interest and share some of the experience that I've built over the years. Uh, a couple of the first courses that I taught uh, focused on my background in uh, web development and technologies for the, for the internet. But as I was uh, exposed to some of the other material, my business experience in the 32 years of IBM started to have a great deal of relevance. And so, but almost serendipitously, I feel energized in discussing and sometimes reminiscing about certain uh, business situations that I was in over the years and how they apply to the, the topics that, uh, that I'm discussing in class and in the areas of management information systems uh, and, uh, you know, in some of the more uh, modern uh, discussions that uh, deal with big data and analytics. Professor Marandici, one of the things that I was most impressed with in looking over your accomplishments over those many years at IBM is the indication that you're really able to think in a truly innovative way because you have three patents. Can you tell us a little bit about those patents, what they were about, and the innovative nature of the work environment at IBM that contributed to that? So from the very beginning of my career, I was fortunate enough, but with some hard work consequences, to always be around the uh, bleeding edge of technical problems. Uh, As a young automation engineer, and this goes in the early days of the personal PC, it was actually working on uh, production uh, machinery development that I was first introduced to uh, the area of uh, image processing. In those days, it was really a programmatic effort to try to extract useful information from, uh, from imagery. And after about six months of effort to try to solve an, an actual problem, 
myself and a uh, and an operations research partner, we developed a uh, a technique that was that we were able to use in production to segment uh, images in a programmatic fashion uh, in uh, under varying lighting conditions, and so that was you know, valuable directly to IBM and, uh, and you know, they sponsored the, the patent. So that was my image segmentation patent. And over the years, uh, what happened was with, with automation uh, and, and manufacturing actually kind of moving out of IBM's focus, I changed my interests towards uh, bona fide software development. And so my other two patents we're in uh, also in, in uh, software development. So my, my second patent pertains to a, uh, a different domain. This one is in the area of what we call uh, middleware software. <clears throat> These are the underpinnings of uh, larger scope uh, enterprise applications for different industry domains. My expertise is, is in the, uh, my deep expertise is in the area of manufacturing industries. And so the need uh, came about to develop sort of neutral frameworks that are suitable for different uh, industry domains. And the, uh, the uh, invention that, that uh, I came up with was how to have an extensible framework of attributes. I mean, these are logical attributes that, uh, that can be attached to already developed object-oriented code and, and be configurable, you know, dynamically as the business needs dictate. So, uh, you know, it gets a little bit technical, but essentially introducing flexibility to what is otherwise an inflexible structure once it is programmed. And so that was considered quite, uh, again, quite valuable in a gen uh, general way and uh, was pursued as a patent. The last uh, of my patents goes to, to the, uh, the technologies that worked their way through personal digital assistance and, and applications for, uh, for mobile devices. This one is a little bit more arcane technically, but again, it, it, it speaks to uh, having generalized encoding that can be customized and, if you will, frozen in, in purpose late uh, during the application uh, of the code. So it's, it's, it's avoiding hard coding certain things and allowing sort of like dynamic bindings and, and uh, at application runtime. There's another honorable mention that I'd like to make because while I was a techie all my life uh, working on computers, I have a very good friend uh, that's a practitioner dentist. And he is very much scientifically minded. And so my work with him is in the area of mapping concepts of physics to clinical problems that he is uh, facing. And, and so uh, that little technical article uh, that we wrote speaks to a pretty big problem in dentistry, uh, which is the uh, TMJ uh, effects, you know, the temporomandibular diseases that, uh, that people uh, develop and what the uh, physical root causes of those are. Interestingly enough, the uh, dentistry domain is not very big in doing the, the uh, technical analysis, the physics behind what's happening in their field. So it's, more, it's treated more like a, a magic art than, uh, than looking at it, you know, from a uh, kinetomechanic uh, perspective. And so since we're both technically minded and very good friends, we had a very good collaboration in this space, which continues to this day, by the way. 
as you look at this ability to come out of a great company like IBM with all those fantastic different experiences you have, tell us a little bit about your teaching philosophy and how you're going to bring all those experiences into the business school classroom with our information technology and operations management group and help our students understand what's really needed out there in the business world. So this is an area where I'm probably, I, I think of myself more as, an, as a novice. I mean, I'm not so much a novice anymore because I've done a number of these courses, but my formal training has not been in, in the area of education. And so uh, that's where I have been learning the most and, uh, and uh, you know, developing my uh, my abilities in, in in this area. Now, having said that, I like to to look at my students as younger colleagues in the making. So I'd like to treat them as more like adults, adult partners, uh, rather than you know uh, younger images of my children, my own children. At IBM, I was involved in education. But the nature of education there is, you know, you're training partners that have, that are motivated to pick up some aspects of the technology and move on, move on with it. Here at, uh, at the School of Business, it's more of a teaching and, and there's more motivation that I feel I need to bring to, uh, to the classroom. Uh, and so... Yes, I am trying to draw parallels and anecdotes from industry wherever I can. And I am hoping that they are found to be informative and, and, and engaging. Time will tell and the feedback that I'm getting will, will tell, you know, how, how well I'm, I'm, I'm achieving that goal. But the idea that I have is to actually treat them more like, you know, the young uh, colleagues than students in the traditional sense of the word. Now, uh, Professor Marindici, you have over 30 years of professional experience at IBM and a wide variety of roles. Can you tell us a little bit about which classes you're going to be teaching now full-time for us here at FAU's College of Business and what classes you're looking forward to teaching? So two of my core classes, uh, one each uh, semester, uh, are in the, in the area of, uh, of web development. One, is, one speaks to social media and web technologies and it is more of a technologies than a uh, how to use social media class. So we're looking at how things get built, and and and, and students actually, you know, put together a, a website that they're posting on the clouds during this class in the fall. Uh, in the springtime, we're looking at uh, mobile device uh, apps and what's involved in uh, getting one of those put together and, and deployed. So we're looking at the technologies behind that, but these are not technical classes in the truest sense of the word because they are in the business context. So they are, you know, they're accompanied by the business planning that goes behind the decision that we make before we develop a website or a mobile app and how that process actually unfolds across many disciplines. But, you know, it does require, you know, getting the, uh, the feet wet with, uh, with technical work. I am also teaching the uh, management information introduction, uh, man, MIS, uh, management uh, information systems introduction class. I've taught it a couple of years ago, and I am uh, teaching it again this semester. I have a brand new course of machine learning and artificial intelligence for business that I got interested to develop. And so that's what I am spending most of my out of the classroom time on 
to 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 get that material prepared and and and, uh, and delivered to to students. Well, Mercho, welcome to FAU's College of Business. We're very glad that you're joining us full time. Thank you very much again, and I, I look forward to uh, to doing a, a a good job here. You know, it was very pleased to 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 be encouraged to do this work. Uh, you know, on on a, on a full time basis, it's a uh, time challenge for me right now, but. I'm used to that, so uh, so again, I look forward to uh, to to the activity going forward. To learn more about the FAU College of Business, please visit business.fau.edu. Dean Gropper presents as part of the FAU College of Business podcast network. To learn more, visit us at business.fau.edu forward slash podcasts and follow Dean Gropper on Twitter at FAU Business Dean.